Hello everyone, this is Wes James here, and today I'm bringing you another awesome Final Cut Pro effect. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create an animated poster effect. If you've ever watched sports promos or pro wrestling promos, you usually see a cutout of a person followed by a logo, some video clips, and a motion graphics background being animated. Today, we're going to attempt to create that here inside of Final Cut Pro. Here's what the final result looks like. I'm here in Final Cut Pro, and the first thing we're going to do is create a background for our poster. Go to the viewer and click on the Generators tab. Scroll down to Matte and select Color Solid. Go to the Controls tab and change the color to Taste. I chose a slightly dark gray for mine, so I'll go with that. Go to the Video tab, give it a duration of about 4-5 to five seconds, and either drag it into your timeline or hit the Insert or Override keys on your Canvas window. Next, let's bring in a motion graphics background. I have a motion graphics background from Videoblocks.com, which I got from their complimentary 7-day trial deal. Try to take advantage of that if you get a chance. Go to your project browser, and double-click the motion graphics background to bring into your viewer. Move the playhead to the endpoint of your color solid. Hit the keyboard shortcut F12 to perform a superimpose edit on the track 2. Go to your effects browser, go to video filters, Scroll down to Image Control and select the second tint filter and apply it to your motion graphics background. Right click on the clip, go to Composite Mode and change it from Normal to Add. Bring the opacity down from 100 to about 59. Go to your Project Browser. Let's bring in a cutout image. I have a cutout of my good friend and soon to be breakout star, Jason Mims. He's going to be the focus of our animation here. This image was cut in Photoshop beforehand, so you may have to do that for your images, or you can use images from the Photo Knockouts collection from Digital Juice. Let's place them on track 3 by changing our track panel from track 1 to track 2. Hit the keyboard shortcut F12 to perform a superimpose edit. Position your cutout to the left side of the screen, just a bit off of the action safe boundary. Select your cutout and hit the keyboard shortcut Option Up Arrow to move them one track above. Go to your project browser. I'm going to bring in a logo from the project browser Jason created for his website so that it can be used here. Place it on the track underneath the cutout with a duration of about 4 seconds. Position it near the action safe boundary. Select the endpoint of the logo. Type in plus 15 to roll the endpoint 15 frames forward. Select your logo and your cutout and hit the keyboard shortcut option up arrow to move it to a track above. I'm going to be using the free text generator from Noise Industries Manifesto. Go to your viewer and click on the generators tab. Scroll down to FX Factory Freebies and select Manifesto Static. Move your playhead to the endpoint of your animation. Hit the keyboard shortcut F12 to perform a superimpose edit on the track 3. Double click to go to the viewer and go to the controls tab. Change the text to taste. I'm going to change it to Jason Mims for me. Change the font to something like Arial Black or a bold font that really stands out. Change the size to somewhere between 60 and 75. Change the angle to 90 degrees. Change the remaining parameters to taste. Position the text within the title safe and action safe boundaries. We're going to set some keyframes for the Y position. Let's expand our controls panel by hitting Command plus. Set a keyframe for the center position at the beginning of the text generator and change the value on the Y from 0 to 500. Move the playhead about 2 seconds 
and change the y position from 500 to 0. Select your cutout and your logo and hit the keyboard shortcut option up arrow three times. Let's bring in some miscellaneous video clips of our subject with a duration of about three seconds and make sure their out points line up with the other tracks. For the first clip, let's apply a mask shape to it. Go to your effects browser, video filters, scroll down to matte, select mask shape and apply it to your first clip. Double click to bring it into the viewer. Change the shape from rectangle to oval. Adjust the horizontal and vertical scale till you get a perfect circle. Once you've done that, change the center to highlight your subject's face as much as possible. Let's feather the mask a bit. Go to your effects browser, go to video filters, go to matte, and select mask, feather, horizontal and vertical and apply it to your clip. This filter is a special filter, which I got from alex4d.com. I'll explain where to get it at the end, so stay tuned. Adjust the horizontal and vertical blur to taste. The last thing we need to do is add a tint filter. Go to your effects browser, video filters, go to image control, and select the second tint and apply it to your clip. Change the tint color to taste. Go to your motion tab, and bring the scale to somewhere between 45 and 50 and reposition it to taste. Let's bring in our second clip and place it on top of our first. Let's go to our project browser. Right click the first clip and select copy. Select your second clip and hit the keyboard shortcut option V to open up the paste attributes menu. Select Basic Content and Filters, and then hit OK. Double click to bring the clip into the viewer. Go to your Filters tab. Reposition the center so that it highlights the person's face in this clip instead. Go to the Motion tab. Reposition the clip to Taste. Let's bring in our third clip and place it on top of our second clip. Select the third clip and hit the keyboard shortcut option V to activate the paste attributes menu. Select basic motion and filters and hit OK. Double click to bring it into the viewer and go to the filters tab. Reposition the center so that now it highlights the person's face in this clip. Go to the Motion tab and change the center to reposition it to taste. Bring out the opacity of all three clips to about 80 to blend in with the background. Let's add transitions to our cutout, logo, and video clips to animate them. For our cutout, Let's use a cross zoom transition from Alex 4D to have it zoom in. Go to your effects browser, video transitions, 3D simulation, and select cross zoom plus curve and apply it to the endpoint of your cutout. Double click the transition to open the transition editor. Change the duration from 1 second to 15 frames. Increase the blur from 10 to 20. Using the hand tool in the transition editor, apply it to the endpoint of your logo. Select the transition on the logo and hit the keyboard shortcut Control D to open up the duration menu. Change the duration from 15 frames to 13 frames and then hit OK. Go to your effects browser, video transitions, scroll down to slide, select push slide and double click it to open the transition editor. Change the duration from 1 second to 11 frames. Change the angle from 0 to 90. Using the hand tool in the transition editor, Apply it to the endpoint of the third clip. Go back to the transition editor and change the angle from 90 to 0. Use the hand tool and apply it to the endpoint of the second clip. 
And finally, change the angle from 0 to negative 90 degrees, use the hand tool once again, and apply it to the endpoint of the first clip. We have a lot of material in our timeline, so let's try to minimize it by nesting our video clips. Select the three video clips and the transitions. Hit the keyboard shortcut Option C to nest items. Rename the nested sequence Video Clips. And then hit OK. Double click the nested sequence to bring it into the timeline. Hit Command Plus to zoom in on the timeline and move the play at least a few frames past the output of the transitions and set a marker for a reference point. Go back to your master sequence by hitting Control w to, cl to close other sequences. We'll select our cutout and our logo and the transitions and bring them down two tracks. Hit the keyboard shortcut option down arrow to bring them down two tracks. Go to your viewer and click on the Generators tab. Scroll down to Text and select Text. Give it a duration of about 3 seconds and drag it on top of your cutout image. Double click to bring it into the viewer and then go to the Controls tab. Change the parameters in the Controls tab to Taste. Once you've set up your parameters, go to the Motion tab and activate the Drop Shadow parameter. Double click the transition on your cutout to open the transition editor. Use the hand tool and drag the transition to the endpoint of the text generator. Select the transition and hit the keyboard shortcut Control D to open up the duration menu. Change its duration from 15 frames to 13 and then hit OK. Let's close the transition editor. Hit the keyboard shortcut command 1 to bring up the viewer window. The last thing we need to spice it up is some flashing flares. I'm going to use a filter from SugarFX Light Pack Collection, which you can try out through FX Factory. Let's get a slug from the viewer window and give it a duration of about 2 seconds. And bring it on top of our text. Go to your effects browser, scroll up, scroll down the video transitions, go to video filters, scroll down to sugar effects, and select paparazzi and apply it to your slug. Double click the slug to bring it into the viewer. Let's go to the filters tab, scroll down the colors parameter, click on the choose preset menu and change it to celebrity light. Change the three colors to taste. Right click on the slug and go to composite mode and change it to screen. Change your overall opacity from 100 to about 69. Now you have flares flashing at a constant rate. Let's render all this by hitting the keyboard shortcut Option R. I'll be back with you guys in just a few seconds. After the render, I added some music and sound effects to my animation to spice it up a bit. You can do it to yours as well with audio elements from Soundtrack Pro, Designer Sound Effects, or any audio you can get your hands on. I set an in and out point for the range of my animation. Let's press shift forward slash and see what we have. And there you go. We just created our very own animated poster effect right inside of Final Cut Pro. This effect can be used for a multitude of things, so use it to your heart's content. Also, check out alex4d.com. Alex Gullner is a London-based Final Cut Pro editor who also creates his own Final Cut Pro plugins, which you can download for free to equip your effects browser.
Also check out the links below for the Manifesto, Sugar Effects Light Pack Collection, and Photo Knockouts from Digital Juice. These are great additions to your toolkit and can help expand your creative bounds. Here's some news hopefully you all have heard of as of late. As of Tuesday, this version of Final Cut Pro is outdated because Apple recently demoed Final Cut Pro X at the Las Vegas Final Cut Pro Super Meet. Here's a picture of what the icon may look like when it's released in June for the amazing price of $299. Hopefully when June rolls around and I've had enough time, I can show you guys how to make awesome Final Cut Pro X effects. Well, this will be my last tutorial for now as I'm about to enter the Chicago 24 hour film race and need to focus my attention on that. If you have any questions or concerns, message me on my channel or leave a comment on my videos. Here's the link for my channel if you need to contact me. Hopefully in May, I'll have some new stuff for you guys by then and hopefully by June, I will have Final Cut Pro X. Until then, stay creative.